Yesterday, I checked out Long Legs. As you can see, I'm here in my kitchen. I'm not doing my usual style of review because it does take a lot of time and effort. And let's face it, YouTube does not repay people who put in a lot of time and effort. So I'm just gonna stand here in my kitchen, do my daily chores and talk about Long Legs. And today my daily chore is I'm gonna do a brew. So today is a brew and a review of Long Legs. Long Legs in a nutshell is about a serial killer who's been at large since at least the 70s. The movie takes place in the 90s. Oh, fuck. What a fucking mess. <laughs> Long Legs is a unique killer where he actually doesn't kill his victims himself. He somehow convinces these families to all kill each other. Then he leaves a note behind with cryptic messages that have yet to be decoded. FBI agent Harker has been brought onto the case because she's actually displayed abilities of being slightly psychic in the past. And they're hoping that she could use her psychic abilities to help catch this killer. Kind of sounds familiar, right? Silence of the Lambs meets Red Dragon or Manhunter. That's kind of the movie. But what do they think of Long Legs? That's the big question, right? Well, actually, I really, really thought that the first half of the movie was excellent. The atmosphere was fantastic. It was dreary. It took place in these kind of weird settings like... Neighborhoods looked familiar, but they also looked really odd at the same time. Sense of foreboding and the suspense building, the mystery, I thought was fantastic. And they kept Nick Cage to a minimum, which was great. You didn't really see his face. They always framed him so his face was slightly out of the shot, which again helps build mystery. It was fantastic. It takes place in the 90s, and that's not really shoved down your throat besides the fact that there's this big, huge picture of Bill Clinton on the wall in the FBI station. And if all this sounds familiar to you, an FBI agent in the 90s who's female tracking down a serial killer, that's because it's a lot like Silence of the Lambs. It even looks like Silence of the Lambs, the whole color palette and everything. She's kind of partially psychic, which is an odd addition to the movie, but it does kind of tie into the ending. Okay, so what didn't I like about Long Legs? Well. The movie was going on pretty damn good. A good mystery thriller, good characters, great atmosphere, keeping Nick Cage to a minimum. Then there's a scene that happens, which I'm sure if you've seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's a scene where Nick Cage is driving a car and begins to have one of his Nick Cage style freakouts. And for me, it was just a little too much and it took me out of the movie, it started to get funny. I was laughing. And actually, I was laughing at that part even on the ride home. In the car, I was laughing at it. I was quoting it. Mommy! Daddy! A weird thing because, like, Nick Cage is known for that. So we're expecting it. And it was the fact that we were expecting it, and at this point, that type of performance has become cliche by him. <laughs> it's funny. If he hadn't done those style of freakouts, Nick Cage freakouts, and so many other movies before this, it would have worked. But now, it's just kind of part of his repertoire. Now that being said, Nick Cage is not horrible in this movie. He is actually really goddamn good. It's just almost too sad that he sabotaged this performance by having so many other weird, funny, freakout style performances before this where now you kind of are expecting that in this, as opposed to if he wasn't doing that in so many other different roles, this would be so damn unsettling. And it is unsettling, just not as unsettling as it would have been if Nick Cage wasn't known already for this weird style of acting. I'm getting all steamy here now. And honestly, it wasn't just the Nick Cage freakout that took me away from the movie. The movie around the halfway point starts to change from like stalking a serial killer, thriller, suspense, horror movie to something more supernatural. And I wasn't really digging the supernatural aspects of it. The devil balls, whatever those are, not devil testicles, but these steel devil balls that make people do things at the devil's command. It just kind of it, it, it took me out of everything. It took me out of wanting to know more about Nick Cage's character, Longlegs, and what really made him tick, and what 
made him get to the point where he's at in his life. That, for me, is what is the basis and the, the drive behind a good serial killer movie, is getting in the brain of the serial killer. And you don't really get that in this. You do a little bit, but I wanted more. Then at the end of the movie, there's a big reveal that I'm not gonna give away, but it kind of seemed like a bit of a cop-out, especially the delivery of the reveal. It was just like a voiceover that explained everything, as opposed to like us really finding out through, you know, the adventure of the FBI cop. It's just explained away and it's like, man, what a cop-out for a pretty goddamn good journey that we've been taking on so far, just to be revealed like that. I also found the end of the movie a bit anticlimactic and really questioning the lead's motives as to why she isn't doing certain things to kind of stop what's going on. She just kind of seems paralyzed throughout the whole last act of the movie. And for someone who's supposed to be like a hardened FBI agent, that doesn't seem all that realistic. Like in Silence of the Lambs, for example, Clarice is a trainee. So it makes sense that she's always second guessing herself and she's acting like a rookie. This isn't a rookie. This should be a hardened, badass FBI cop. And I just kind of didn't get that sense off of her. But her performance was great nonetheless. I just thought that the character should have been a bit more hardened. So I'm kind of torn on long legs because the first half I super enjoyed. In the last half, it was enjoyable, but it also kind of left you scratching your head a little confused. And it just kind of got too silly with the devil and devil balls and Nick Cage's super over-the-top performance, which in most cases would have worked. But in this case, you know it's Nick Cage, so you kind of find yourself laughing at him, which is what you don't really want. There are aspects of his performance that are super eerie and work very well. Like his look is great. He kind of looks like this weird love child between Marilyn Manson and Tiny Tim, and it's pretty goddamn unnerving. So I can totally see why Long Legs is a very polarizing movie. Some people are seeming to really love it. Some people kind of hate it. Uh, I wouldn't say I hated it. I almost loved it. Like it was almost like a great movie, but it was just kind of those things I mentioned that tipped the scales for me a little bit towards the more silly and not really having everything explained to you, which you need in a movie like this. And the big cop-out reveal at the end really kind of left a little bit of a bitter taste in my mouth. But, you know, you go check it out. You tell me what you think. I'm sure a lot of people will like it. A lot of people probably will agree with me with the last act. And I think a lot of people do that I've spoken to. So, that's the end of my brew and a review of Long Legs. And uh, if you're like me, you'll be driving home from the theater going, Mommy! Daddy!